What's up, guys? Joe Simons here, one of the co-founders at Salt Strong. We're talking about the best sunscreen for fishermen. And I'm also going to talk about the absolute worst sunscreen for fishermen. If you're wondering, hey, why should I listen to this guy? Well, I have uh, I've been around the sun quite a bit to the point that I did have skin cancer at 28 years old, and not just skin cancer, but it was the real deal. Melanoma, I've got some really uh, nasty scars to uh, to prove it. It was one of the scariest times in my life. And, and it also, you know, kind of forced me to be a whole lot smarter about the sunscreens that I put on it. And really what's interesting, and this hopefully will be one of the biggest takeaways for you, is a lot of people ask, well, hey man, you got, you, you know, potentially almost died. I mean, my next step, when you start hearing a doctor talk about chemotherapy and, and possibly like amputation, it's a whole lot serious than just getting a, a mole cut off. I mean, I was in that point where it was a full day of surgery at, at a specialist in Atlanta. I mean, it was, this is a really, really big and scary deal. And a lot of people ask, well, Joe, like, were you just bad about putting sunscreen on? And the irony was I wasn't. And in fact, I was using the skin sunscreen that I believe is almost like putting poison on your body. And and, and at pretty much all times I had sunscreen on. And what's really, really intriguing is that skin cancer is at all time highs right now. Yet guess what also is at all time highs? the amount of sunscreen that is available out there. So we have more sunscreen available and it's now, you know, multi, multi-billion dollar industry. And yet, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago, sunscreen was hardly even an industry. And yet now we have more, we have record-breaking amounts of skin cancer being reported every single day. And we have record amounts of people being inside. People like me and you that have normal jobs like desk jobs, we're inside more than we ever have before in the history. So that kind of makes you scratch your head, right? If we're inside as a society more than ever before, right? We're not doing farming and stuff like we used to. I mean, most of us have office jobs, have desk jobs. And, and yet there's now more sunscreen available and more sunscreen being sold and used than ever before. Why is it that skin cancer and skin damage is at all time highs? And yeah, I, I understand there's global warming and you know the, the sun's hot and all that stuff, but that, that doesn't make any sense. It's in fact, it's completely counterintuitive. And I'm gonna share with you the, the really the reason that many people are saying this is true. And I'm also gonna talk about the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the seven ingredients. If there's any of these seven active ingredients in your sunscreen, I would not use them. I would stay as far away as possible because in my case here, I mean, I'm a guy that always wore sunscreen and now looking back at what some doctors have been telling me is a lot of it could have been that I was literally poisoning my skin. If you have sunscreen that is taking the coat off of your boat or staining it permanently, is that really the kind of stuff that you wanna put on your skin? Absolutely not. So I'm gonna start from kind of worst to, uh, to best and the, the absolute worst one is any sunscreen that contains oxybenzone as an active ingredient. Now here's the sad part. The majority of those sunscreens that you see on the aisles of the, the Walmarts and the big convenience stores and supermarkets have oxybenzone in them. That is what's so, so sad. I would never, ever, ever put that on my skin. And just one example of a brand who uses oxybenzone in the majority of their sunscreens, at least as I'm recording this right now, is Coppertone. I'm not trying to pick on them, but I bring them up because it's probably one of the most highly used sunscreens among fishermen like ourselves. That's stuff that I used all the time, and it's literally like putting poison into your skin. Neutrogena who is known as kind of one of the, the, the middle line in terms of, you know, done by dermatologists, number one dermatologist recommended brand. They even make a point to say oxybenzone free, oxybenzone free, which is what Coppertone has in all their Coppertone sports. All those little blue spray bottles are literally loaded with oxybenzone. You, I mean, they make a point to advertise that this does not have that, what's essentially poison on your skin. Next, you have Banana Boat. This is Banana Boat Sport. I know my brother Luke uses this. I give him a hard time. He's slowly moving towards uh, towards this now. This is now always on his boat. And this even has some bad ingredients. And what you wanna do, don't focus when you ever look at sunscreen on the inactive ingredients. You wanna look at them uh, if you can even understand what they are. But the active ingredients are the ones that are going to be on your skin, that are gonna be, and especially if it's not 
Chemical, if it's chemical base versus physical base, this is going to be more physical base. Chemical means that it is actually absorbing into your skin. You're in some cases you could literally be putting poison into your skin. And this active ingredients, uh, number one, avobenzone, which is not good, and also homosalate. Homosalate, I don't know, homosalate. And then also there is one other one that is octocrylene at 6%. So we got 3%. On the first one, 10% on the homosalate, and then 6% on the octocrylene. All three of these are chemicals you do not want on your skin. You do not want them on your boat. You do not want them on your kids. And yet those are the three active ingredients in Banana Boat. So I would never, ever use or recommend Banana Boat to anyone that I cared for if you truly want to protect your skin and not put just horrible chemicals on your skin regardless of the sunburn this will protect you from a sunburn i mean that, that's why they created all this stuff back in the day and there's, there's not been enough regulation on what this stuff is actually doing to people it is now happening you're seeing more and more studies looking at, at the sunscreen because it just it, it was always assumed that hey if it protect you from getting sunburn it was good right and that's not the case. I mean, how is it that there's more sunscreen sold today than any time before? I mean, we're talking about multi-billions of dollars sold every year, and yet we're getting more skin cancer reported than any other time in history. It doesn't make any sense. So next is Neutrogena. This is, you know, dermatologist recommended. That's still, of course, a lot of, uh, a lot of marketing there. And on their main ones, they have avobenzone which is not a good one at three percent the homosalate at 15 percent which is not a good one uh something with a uh, os oscillate and then the octocrylene uh, all of which are horrible ingredients even in this neutrogena and so a lot of people just say oh it's dermatologist recommended uh, by by who I, I don't know i know a lot of dermatologists my wife is a physician and she has a lot of really good dermatologist friends, and they would never recommend this. I don't even know what dermatologists are recommending this stuff to put on. I, I believe Neutrogena is, is true. They have some, some great skin care for women and men. But in terms of this beach defense and anything with sunscreen, I would not recommend it. So you might be wondering, all right, well, what, what do we recommend here? Well, this is the Elta MD Skin Care. And there are multiple types. Some, their, their Elta does have one version that is not good. And what I love about this is not that expensive. And even though it does have, is their active ingredient ingredients, zinc oxide at 10% and titanium dioxide, which means it's going to be a physical based sunscreen that's going to sit on top of your skin. And that's at 10% zinc and 5.5% titanium dioxide, which every dermatologist will tell you, this is the stuff that you want. Those are the active ingredients that you want. There's no other active ingredients in this. It's still not gonna be too crazy white on your skin. And I'll do a quick little demo and show you what it looks like. But then again, I, I would I would take white skin or at least a, a white face during, a, during a, a day out in the water all day long versus putting literally poison chemicals onto my skin and potentially suffering from melanoma like I did when I was 28 years old. I'm telling you, I never in a million years thought it could happen to me. I was always so good about putting sunscreen on. I would, you know, went through a lot of banana boat. I went through a lot of copper tone back in the, in the day. And I always had sunscreen. And my friends would tell you why I always carried sunscreen with me. And yet, and, and I was super tan. I wasn't a white dude at the time. And yet I still got melanoma. So it can happen to anyone. Never in a million years that I think it was going to, to happen to me. I was not the guy out there getting fried and burned all the time. I was actually pretty responsible with my skin. Uh, all things considered. Yes, I did get some sunburns like I think anyone who spends enough time in the sun as a teenager will, but I was never that guy just, you know, blistering up all, all the time. It was uh, it was a lot of it due just to having bad sunscreen. So I would highly recommend this. I'll put a link down below where you can get it on Amazon. It is not expensive. It is water waterproof, water resistant, this stuff. I mean, it will be, if you have facial hair like I do, it will get in there and it will be white. But once again, it comes out quick and, and in terms of the shower, and I would rather have a little white on me than, uh, than have to worry about getting fried out there and then ultimately have to worry about getting a, a skin cancer. So highly recommend this LTMD after all the stuff I've tried. My wife, once again, a physician, many of her friends are dermatologists, and they all recommend more of a physical-based sunscreen just like this. And this happens to be, in my opinion, one of the most affordable ones. There are maybe some better ones in there that have a little bit 
more or less zinc oxide and tit titanium dioxide. And, and some of them even have a little bit more of a, of a sheer uh, 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 finish. A lot of the women like them, but they're super expensive. So I wanted to recommend one that I personally use every single time out in the water. My brother now uses this as, uh, as well because he's seen what it's doing for uh, for protecting his skin and has now you know read a little bit of the articles I've sent him about some of the literally the poisons and the chemicals that people are putting on their body with sunscreen. This is probably the most affordable one that has only zinc oxide and only titanium dioxide, which is what you want. You want a physical based sunblock something that's going to literally sit on your skin versus chemicals that go in your skin. If you're putting this stuff on your body, it is not sitting on top of your skin. It is literally absorbing into your skin. And in many cases, it's like putting pure poison into your body. It is not a good thing, which is why so many people are getting like screaming at the top of their lungs, some dermatologist about making sure you have the right sunscreen, not just having sunscreen in general. I'll put a list of all seven of those chemicals in the show notes at saltstrong.com. If you have any questions or any other thoughts or any other recommendations, I'd love to hear them. I'm constantly trying this stuff out. I'm very passionate about it with three young kids now that also have kind of some fair Irish skin. I don't even want to risk it. I want the absolute best. So please, please, please let me know your thoughts on this. I truly just want to share with you what works and all of the lessons I've learned of dealing with melanoma and having to go back to the dermatologist twice every single year of someone who 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 did have a, a very severe case of, uh, of melanoma. Uh, I'm telling you, it is so, so scary. And I mean, tons of people are losing their life every year to this. So one, get the right sunscreen. Check this out. I'll put a link there on, uh, on Amazon. And then two, definitely go to a dermatologist. Had I not gone, it, I happened to be sitting in an airplane next to a guy. And a lot of people have also asked, hey, what did it look like? It was just a mole. It was just a normal mole I had right there on my arm. It looked a little bit red, but not at the point I was worried about it. And I was on an airplane and the guy next to me had said something about getting it checked out. And he wasn't a dermatologist. It was like a guardian angel. And that prompted me to go in because I had no appointments. I wasn't planning on going in that year. And I happened to go in, they saw it, said it didn't it didn't look right, but they weren't really worried about it. The biopsy came back and said it was it was melanoma, uh, the real deal skin cancer. And all of a sudden, boom, I'm getting rushed into a hospital bed, full day of, uh, of surgery. And uh, it was a really, really, really scary time. And it happened so fast. So please go to dermatologists, get checked up and make sure they do a full body scan. Because uh, what I found too, it can get anywhere. Skin cancer is not just in places that you're getting hit by the sun, although that is the most common. So thank you guys. If you have any questions, let me know down below. There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live salt strong and wear the line today